It's Jess. I am here with another card for the Valentine's Day Cardapalooza week. And for today's card, we're just starting off with this um, piece of solar white cardstock. And I'm taking this mask from Studio Calico, and I wanted to try a new technique. This was the first time I'd ever tried it, but it actually worked out okay. So I wanted to share it here with you guys. And today's card is non traditional Valentine's Day colors. We're using blues and purples, but I thought it would be kind of nice maybe for a mas more masculine card instead of the pinks and reds you usually see, even though I do love the pinks and reds. <laughs> so I'm just taking the mask and I'm laying it down on my piece of cardstock there and then taping over it with some washi. And then I am thoroughly coating it with a thick layer of Versamark. So the idea here is that the Versamark will get into all those little um, negative areas where the stars are cut out. And what I'm hoping and what worked out pretty well is that I can then go and emboss the first mark stars. So I'm just taking some silver embossing powder here and putting on a pretty thick coating of the stuff. And I actually don't really use silver embossing powder very much, but it was really fun and it really adds a nice sparkle to your project. So I think I'm going to have to bust that out again. But I'm just making sure everything gets coated and it's not perfect. It's not as good as if I were to have like a star stamp star background stamp but it was good enough especially because I'm gonna be doing some inking over it and it just the way the stars are they didn't need to be perfect they could just be little silver I don't know dots and look okay still so now I'm gonna ink over that background I heat set the embossing powder using my heat tool and I'm starting um, at the top with peacock feathers that was a seasonal distress ink it's probably my favorite distress ink ever it's such a pretty teal color and it um, really blends nicely with this um, other seasonal color which is Salty Ocean. So these two are probably my favorite combination of Distress Ink colors at the moment. They're really pretty together. So one thing I like about Distress Ink is that you can build it up and sort of create a light or a dark look. Right now I'm just starting off light because you can always build. So if you go dark, you're committed to the dark look. <laughs> and then this last color here is the Dusty Concord. So when you're working with Distress Inks, you just want to remember to use a light hand, start off of the craft sheet, and um, work your way on. I like to work in circles. I think that helps cut down on the streakiness. And then because I wanted this to be more of a vibrant and rich night sky look, I decided to go over all of the colors one more time. So I'm just redoing the exact same process over the whole thing. And that also really made the silver embossed stars pop. And because they're embossed, they resist the ink, so I didn't have to worry about them getting ink on them. Now I'm just taking this piece of cardstock from Basil. It's from their card shop collection. It's a nice gray color. And I wanted to make a top folding card, so that means it is five and a half um, tall by four and a quarter wide. And then I'm just trimming down this little piece that we created because I wanted it to have a fourth of an inch border around the outside of the whole card. So that would mean that it would be uh, four inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall. And I am going to take my little inking tool with the purple on it here, just because when I cut it, it kind of got the white core showing again, and I wanted to make sure that it looked really nice and finished. So I have this little stamp set here from Studio Calico and Hero Arts. It's the Darling Deer stamp set. And I'm stamping out the sentiment, I thank my lucky stars for you in VersaFine ink. I thought it was a really nice compliment to our star background. Then I'm also taking this little square framelit and just running that through my die cut machine just to have a little uh, sentiment element that I can place onto the front of the card. Then I'm taking this gray twine from Doodlebug. It's a really nice soft gray. It works for a lot of different projects. And I cut a slit in the top fold of the card there because I wanted to wind it around the card to sort of create this vertical element on the side of the card. So I wound that around three times. Then I decided that my sentiment element looked a little sad and plain and lonely. So I decided to give him a little frame with this just piece of black cardstock. It sort of anchored that down a little bit more and made that look a little bit nicer. 
So I'm just running some glue dots along the back of that there and adhering that onto the twine. And then I am creating a double bow out of the twine just because I thought that looked nice with the thicker, with the three strings in the background, it needed to be a little bit thicker and chunkier than just one single bow. So I just tied that up really quick and easy and I'm sort of messing with it there to make it look exactly right. That's kind of a tricky thing to do is to make your bows look perfect. And then just taking a little micro glue dot and sticking that on the back of there and then mounting that to the front of the card. And that's it for today, guys. Here is a picture and then a close-up. And as always, you can visit www.jesslarsondesign.com for more.